me just do like a test run for a minute if you okay. want to like say something well, and I'll play it back and make sure that there's good yeah. audio. Okay, you're testing audio right now. My okay. voice is kind of froggy, so maybe it will actually record well. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, so this this is my dad, Laird Wilcox, and he's um, fighting off a cold, so he's, he's a little, maybe a little bit froggy, like he said. So if you want to go ahead. Okay, Carrie asked me about the Wilcox collection at the University of Kansas and, and how it came to be. And uh, it's kind of a long story, but I grew up in a family where there was a lot of political intensity. There was a lot of discussion, and I had relatives, mostly aunts and uncles, but also my grandparents who were very conservative or very liberal. And when I was a child, I used to listen to an awful lot of debate and discussion about political issues, and sometimes these would get very heated to the point of name-calling. And I always wondered what it was about these abstractions that got people so excited. What is it about being a leftist or being a right-winger that, that gets people all worked up and excited where those political identifications can become more important than friendships within the family or, or, uh, or even their own children? Very often families fall apart over issues like this. So I began kind of investigating these things when I was quite young. I was still in my teens. And I started collecting literature and reading articles and books about various political movements, the Socialist Party and the Communist Party and the Ku Klux Klan and John Birch Society and groups like that across the entire political spectrum. And I began acquiring a lot of literature. And when I was 20 years old, I wound up at the University of Kansas in Lawrence, and I kept pursuing this interest and uh, won a book contest award for my collection of books on political movements. A few years later, I uh, got in touch, or rather the people from the library there got in touch with me and they were interested in acquiring the material that I'd collected, which at that time was about four file drawers full of pamphlets, newsletters, and things like that. So we had a discussion about it, and they wound up paying me about a thousand bucks for the material that I'd collected. And that was the beginning of the Wilcox collection. And that would have been in 1964. Since then, voluntarily without being paid for it I've kept adding to it and adding to it and adding to it to the point now in 2009 it's huge it would probably fill a boxcar and it consists of hundreds of books thousands perhaps on political movements and extremist groups and causes it, can, it has a lot of audio tapes and videotapes a lot of Magazines, journals, newsletters, pamphlets, leaflets, brochures, and flyers. So, um, I think they're in the process of uh, planning a shift where they're going to get some more space in the seas and move, move everything down. Uh -huh. And so now all of this will get <coughs> shifted, uh -huh. um, shifted down so that we've got more space Yeah. Um, for for newer stuff. It's a constant, you know, battle for space. Always. Because we just don't have any. And these are used frequently by people who are researching these movements. I've had graduate students from as far away as Australia and New Zealand come to the University of Kansas to use the material in my collection. It's a major academic resource, and I'm very proud of it and still contribute material to it and talk to people who are researching this general area of political causes and crusades. Okay. Is that enough? Sure, yeah, whatever you think. Okay. Okay, so go ahead and stop there. What that sounds like is a radio spot. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Well, I used to do a lot of talk shows. I do maybe sometimes two or three a night. <clears throat> and they got very frustrating because they always get the same questions. The thing I just told you, I probably told slightly different versions of that 152, 300 times. Right. You know? yeah. 
And television is a little different. Television is more kind of show and tell. You have to have more of a presence. <coughs> you also have to be in the mood for it. 